come back to this shiny bronzish goldenish wire. here the bottom and then go all around the cables cover their color nature. Starting to look a little bit Kylo Renish, but I'll make it look better. You might notice I'm not a big fan of this lightsaber, it looks quite rough. I don't want it that rough, I want it interesting. What I'm doing is I'm tying all the wires inside here. As much as I can. Okay, so I managed to put the wire all around it and then hot glued it to the surface until they reach the same area where all the other wires are connecting and here's where I'm gonna probably lately, uh, later cut off some of the plastic and just leave the connectors so that it can be just squished inside the hilt and all the connections will be done in here. The other thing I'm gonna do, I don't particularly like these areas so what I'm going to do is put the larger cogs that I have here slanting downwards here. You'll still see the crystal through the holes and some of the cogs are quite clear, like this one. But it won't look as rough as, the, as it looks now. So, usual hot glue. Finishing again, I'll do a bit of some more. Don't overdo it, otherwise, it shows. Yeah. You burn yourself as usual. Also, this cogs are quite nice because they have this designs that look a bit mystic so if you place them in the right places it actually looks like Jedi decoration runes all that stuff I'm gonna put another runic one here not 
Not super glue. Uh, hot glue. God, I keep calling it super glue. It's hot glue. and you should burn yourself a little bit don't worry about the filaments they'll come off it's the problem using this type of glue and now I've finished the runic ones so I'm gonna use something that's a little bit curved but it still looks interesting. Let's see if we can find one. Yeah, these two. These two are curved enough. I don't know, they're too big. Uh, middle size. Cog. Why not? Oh damn, one done came off. And it's running past the chamber current. Yeah, you have to give time for the hot glue to cool off, otherwise it messes up everything. Let's try again with this. Make sure the cogs are well supported. Wait. Let me put this one here. very hot now so it melts a lot and makes things slide down if you don't wait until they're cooled off okay, there are several problems with using everything hot glue the welder so it's a learning process Just be patient, do things slowly, and they will work properly. Let's see if I can find out all of these. Um, apparently, this. Oh, there it is. Okay, where crystal chamber is starting to look quite well it is steampunkish at the same time looks quite Jedi like so 
you have to wait until the light is on inside, then you'll see what difference it makes. And the next part will be doing the electrical connections so you can actually see it working. So what I showed you on the computer was how to program computer stop. I can't say that word. Oh okay, anyway, how I showed you on the screen because otherwise Alexa starts talking uh, is how you program uh, the lights on the uh, on an Arduino and uh, the other thing is uh, I programmed it as a green light but it can be changed there is a code there it's um, set there where the code is it says RGB values uh, where there's 0, 2, 5, 5, 0 those are the coordinates, uh, the RGB values for um, uh, green. So I'm gonna have a green crystal, but you can change them to whatever color you wish. And the good thing is that you're gonna have a connection to the Arduino directly from the hilt, so you can change the color whenever you want by just connecting it to your computer. So the next thing that I was gonna do is connect the wires to an Arduino. So what you can see here is, sorry I mixed up the colors, I know I said I shouldn't but I didn't have any more uh, colored wires to connect. But anyway, the green, like ground, is the black and it's connected to ground. Uh, the red, it's white now, and it's connected to 5 volts. Here. Actually, no, 3 volts. No, 5. Yeah, it's 5 volts, sorry. Right, 3. Double check if it actually works. Right, the voltage gets confusing once in a while, but it should work. If it works, it's good. Yes, it works. So it's going to 3 volts. Don't overdo it with the voltage, otherwise, it will burn nail pixels and then you won't be able to do anything. Anyway, once this is properly connected, uh, the program I made has number 6 as the input. So you put yellow, which is the signal cable, inside number 6 here. Okay. Now you connect them. You connect to Electricity. I'm just going to use the computer electricity for this one, but it's 5 volts input normally. And it will light up. But what you will notice from here is that, although it looks really good already, um, the crystal inside is not as lit up as I wish it would be. So what I'm going to do is add some extra light from here, white light. It will just make it stronger. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take a 12 volt connection here and connect it to a battery pack and an Arduino shield which increases the voltage, which is one of these. You can find this quite easily on Amazon. There are several versions of them, but as long as they have this thing on top, you know that you're getting the right one. 
and um, each one of them has connections ground 12V, ground 12V. The top connection here is the input. So you see that the top connection comes here and goes to the battery pack. I mean the three battery pack because it's 3.7 volts each. So you're gonna have to get 12 volts in and you're not even gonna get them with three, but at least it's enough to light it up. If you get less than this voltage, it's not gonna light up anything that's uh, more than five volts. So put three batteries in here, connect it ground and 12 volts uh, as usual here. So this is the white one here. This is goes to the object, this goes to the battery. Okay, once this connection is made, you connect the light. I just bought just a strong LED light and it has side LEDs and I'll tell you why in a second. I'm gonna connect this one here. So as usual ground okay. and I'm gonna position it here. Well temporarily test it because I haven't done it yet and see what happens when I place a battery inside. Wish me luck, hope it doesn't explode. And there it is. Now it's gonna shine some light inside but still not enough I think so we're gonna have to do something more drastic than this. Well the light is fine, it's working. So we'll remove the battery for a second and we'll deal with it later. What we're gonna do here is first of all disconnect electricity. I don't like doing this with electric sorry. Connect the welder and usual and use our usual trick. We're gonna have this. Um, keep the wires away. When the welder is hot enough, I'm just gonna make a hole in the middle so that the light passes through. So you just go inside the middle here and you pass through. What you put here, the welder might not be long enough to reach it. But all well, the plastic is still liquid. Just use something sharp to remove the plastic from there. Plastic to get to see inside. You can actually remove this because of plastic has been melted and just directly touch it.
about the mess inside. It will not be visible from the outside and worst case scenario it will just make it look cool. Okay, so now I can directly see the crystal inside from the hole. Okay, there's a hole there, I can see the crystal. So it means it's deep enough. I'm gonna just turn off this. And turn on the glue. Because we have to put back the piece that we removed. back on and put the metal piece back in. I think I might need to buy a new glue gun because this one is losing more glue outside than it's using inside. gets hot, hopefully it will come off the paper. Just need a couple of minutes to make it get hot enough. Just rip the plastic right there. Wait there. It's not like I'm losing a lot. Yeah, definitely a new glue gun soon. This is creating a problem. Point. I've had it for three years, so I guess it's time. Get some glue in that and place this bit back in. glue back on. So I'm gonna remove the welder, otherwise I'm gonna probably touch it and burn myself again. And here is a tying up that I told you about. Okay, so welder on the side. It's very hot. Glue gun is still working, because we might need it. And I'm gonna connect the batteries again to see the effect. And cut this. Connect the Arduino. This is an Arduino Uno, but we'll get a smaller one later on probably to fit in the blade because the blade will have uh, in the um, hilt because the hilt will have limited space. So now this one will shine light directly on the crystal, making it brighter and making the top much brighter. What we're gonna have is a lot of electronics here and some holes in the plastic hill that will print a 3D print so that you'll see light inside as if something is going on. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off. 
and I'm going to show you the last part with this construction. So, uh, I'm going to want to glue this inside. But I'm going to have another metal piece on top. If it makes it a bit heavier, it doesn't matter because the front needs to be balanced with the back, and the back will have the batteries, which will be very heavy. So what I'll do, I'll put this one in and glue it together. Actually, we probably will do it together. Let's see. It's the inside part anyway, so it's not going to get hit directly. So what I would suggest is just use glue. Put this here. Started to look a bit like a traditional lightsaber inside. And where's the light? There's a light. I'm gonna glue this here. And this is gonna have to be going around here. So the middle light will not expand in any other areas, but just go to the center. Hopefully it will center it on the crystal more. Let it cool off a bit. And now we're going to do the connection for the engine. I know most of you will have forgotten this, but we actually have a rotating crystal. And this is very simple. I'm gonna connect this to the engine under, which has two little connectors here, and it says also positive and negative happily, so I won't have to experiment. So this is negative, this is positive, and we attach a negative and a positive. These are right colored. So this black is negative and red is positive. But what we're gonna do is simply because they're little rings, we just try to get a stiff part through the ring without breaking it, because if you break it, that's game over. Okay, so one is going through, the other one, ah, uh, metal cap came off, I think I'm going to have to weld it. Okay, so this is connected, and because they're well connected, probably going to weld all of this. I always try to avoid welding, you know why, but... At this point, I think to make a better job, I need to weld everything. So I'm gonna disconnect the glue gun. That's another hot piece I don't need. And I'm gonna connect the welder again. This is gonna be slightly easier welding, probably. I'm that lucky. What we're gonna do is weld a metal here. Same principle as before, so you have to connect the wires to 
tips to the metal bits where the electricity passes through. One. We're lucky with the second one too. So we have the second one is always the one that gives me trouble. Whatever it is. Connect to the second one. So they're uh, stuck inside now and they won't come off. And we're going to do the same with a big metal piece on top there. So, second, right there, hopefully it won't fall. Remove the glue. That's going to stop proper welding. And Not just stand up by itself. We're gonna hold it with something just until the welding is done. So, always on glue. Since the glue is gone completely, we're not going to be able to weld anything. So, two little drops of metal there. And now, hopefully, if I put this here, melt metal and to weld it in place. around it a 
things. And I am very picky and I like doing things quite well, otherwise I'm not happy with it. But you can do it in different ways if you want. You don't have to use a metal cap here. And the bottom, I can tell you, it's definitely gonna hold. Some metal is all going at the bottom, but I want the top to hold too. not working at my advantage, that's why I'm going to have to hold it like this. This works. Okay, get in there. Find. Hopefully it's gonna hold. Problem is all this wiggling disconnected the battery which was already badly connected. Disconnect the welder. <sighs> always dangerous, always hot. Away. Now for the final test. And right now it's very bulky, it has a lot of things going on, a lot of little things that shouldn't be there. Big pieces. Uh, that's gonna be changed to fit it inside the lightsaber. But for now we needed the functionality and to see if it works. But then I'm gonna start connecting smaller pieces to it. Like, instead of an Arduino Uno, I'm gonna use an Arduino Nano, which works in exactly the same way, it's only smaller and more versatile. It also connects 
things like big vibration and other similar things. Okay, let's see if we can have a look at the entire thing. There's a bit of space to occupy everything. I'll probably use some of these later, but I'll just put them in the slot. I dedicated to lightsabers. By the way, keep all the pieces together. Don't mix them. Because in a bit, this becomes a nightmare everything in order once, don't want to do it again. Especially when you have so many bits and pieces around. <laughs> 